Lily's friend. Hello. Any good gossip flying around? An odd man came into the diner the other week. He claimed some invisible barrier was keeping him from leaving the Boston area. How strange. He said he would see the words, you cannot go that way, before his eyes, and then could go no further. I assumed he was on Day Tripper. Can I ask some questions? Depends on the question, I suppose. What did you want to know? What is this place? A greenhouse. A lab. A farm. A place to relax. It's a lot of things. You're gonna have to be more specific. So, is this your life's work? Every bit of it. I've got so much going on, I don't know where to start. And I never shut up about it, so ask at your own peril. What are you trying to do? My first projects under Dr. Pensky were to introduce bioluminescent substrate and enzyme marker genes from vault freezer luciferase plasmids. I cultivated them right outside the entrance to Vault 81, because space in our vault is at a premium, so using it to grow food is more important. They mutated so fast that they began to use the new genes in their own growth cycles as some sort of quorum activation signal. With sharp eyes, you could see their dim light pulse in sync with separate vines around them and release luminescent pollen together. How did you know that? The few samples I grew inside the vault didn't experience the same changes. They act as I expected. Stubborn to change. I hypothesized it was the ionizing background radiation outside the vault that accelerated their evolution. Later, I was to find some of those same vines outside the vault growing and feeding on mole rat carcasses, which made them grow even faster. Their tendrils would intertwine with each other and pass on the nutrition, like feeding a colony. It was amazing to watch. About that time, I had to leave Vault 81 to continue working with them. They simply grew too fast. It became more work to cut them back every week from outside the vault or Dr. Penske's greenhouse. Unfortunately, I could never reproduce what occurred in the fern flower, the wholesale assimilation of entire chromosomes and organ systems. That was until I tried my experiments on some vines growing over forest fungal blight I happened to be cultivating. That was my breakthrough. How did you discover that? I saw flower buds of different colors and species growing from the same vines. Here it was. The vine had adopted entire organ systems. Honestly, the blight discovery was serendipity. I got lucky. But chance favors the prepared mind, no? I hypothesize something in the blight is allowing for multiple nuclei to exist harmoniously in the same body together, but remaining apart. Part of a fungal life cycle involves such a phenomenon. Nuclei from separate organisms grow in the same fruiting body, even in the same cells. Yet, until the moment of recombination, they remain genetically separate in this same body. It's a strange system indeed. I'm currently testing various purified fractions of blight extract for the ability to catalyze the same sorts of events in my experiments. If I can isolate and purify the factor, we can give this ability to settlements even where blight doesn't grow. That's amazing. Do you have any more details? Oh, of course. I don't get to teach biology lessons very often. Dr. Penske always said, the best way to learn is to teach. Biology lesson? Yes, a biology lesson. I'm so glad you asked for one. Plants don't react to chromosomal aberrations the same way animals do. They're quite tolerant of them and can react in surprising ways. Take the fern flower, for instance. Before the war, a flowering fern didn't exist. A fern isn't an angiosperm. It evolved long before flowers. This massive level of genetic change in only 200 years required the radiation from the war to catalyze it. Furthermore, this genetic change cannot be achieved simply by a Hox gene activation, like restoring ancient genes for teeth in chickens. The fern evolved before flowers. There was no genetic information of the flowering life cycle in its genome to reactivate in the first place. Where did this information come from? The simplest explanation would be horizontal gene transfer, but that's too much genetic information. How did the fern then come to possess its flower? That's one of the questions I'm trying to answer. How would something like that even work? Given the high levels of ambient ionizing radiation in the world these days, I cannot rule out an entirely new mechanism for genetic recombination. I'm testing my new theory that perhaps there's yet another life cycle involved. That of a fungus. Fungal reproduction is very odd indeed. During sexual reproduction, the nuclei of two organisms share cells, nutrients, and grow in the same body. But they remain distinctly genetically separate until sporulation. They share the same body, but are two different genomes. 
I'm also trying to reproduce these sorts of gross changes in morphology, physiology, and life cycle in this greenhouse, with some success. I believe I'm harnessing that mechanism on my bioluminescent vines. As you can see, the same vines clearly display more than one species in color or flower. They're beautiful, but one day I hope to grow many types of food from a single vine. Food security for the Commonwealth is my real motivation. Nice. That sounds pretty high tech. What do you grow here? Mostly plants for my research, but also cotton for the city. My ultimate goal is to develop a plant which can grow many types of food on one vine. If the flowers are to be believed, it's definitely possible. These plants are amazingly resilient and accommodating to new genetic information. They grow rapidly and adapt their transport mechanism to distribute nutrients in an optimal manner. Look at the supplemental nutrients drawn in and spread from the left corner, upstairs and across, and then down to the plants in the right corner. It's pretty amazing, no doubt about it. It is, isn't it? They grow outwards, and the other vines were attracted to the nutrients. Before, the glow was hardly noticeable. But I watched as the vines cooperated and spread the nutrients to every corner of the greenhouse. From that one corner, all the way over to the other one. The vines slowly amplified their glow like a bright wave spreading out. The next flowers to germinate possessed the bioluminescent properties from the vines. It was so beautiful, I had to bring Professor Scara to show her. You've got technology here that I never dreamed possible. It's amazing. I wanted to ask you about something else. It would be nice to know more about you. Not much to tell. I'm from Vault 81, I love my work, and I use the emergency shower to stay clean. But what would you like to know? You seem awfully proud of this lab. I am very proud of this lab. My career and this greenhouse are a result of the time and sacrifice of many people. Both Diamond City and the Vault have been very generous in helping me with my research. I really like it here, and I have long-term plans to stay. It's the least I can do to repay the kindness of the citizens. What type of doctor are you? Fancy people would say molecular botanist, but in plain words, I specialize in plant, DNA, RNA, and protein interactions at the molecular level. As one of the few vaults not screwed over by vault tech, we had ample seed stocks and databases to study in anticipation of Reclamation Day. All the courses and materials were there to earn my PhD in the vault, including two doctors. With Scara and Duff, I had my PhD committee. My research defense mostly confused the vault, but my committee understood it enough and recognized its value, so they granted my doctorate. How'd you end up here? That's a long story. I'm a Vault 81 refugee, although I wasn't exactly fleeing anything. I was Dr. Penske's apprentice for many years. She's a formidable woman and taught me everything I know about botany and molecular biology. She respected my wishes to work on my own experiments and gave me as much space as she could in her greenhouse. But my vines grow too quickly, and it would only take a few weeks for a fully cut vine to cover a wall and grow right out of the room. As pretty as it was, the situation was untenable. I had to leave the vault to continue my work. Luckily, Dr. Penske and Overseer McNamara see the value in my work, and continue to provide facilities I don't have. The vault still has things like an autoclave, protein synthesizer, plasticware fabrication, seed stocks, and media ingredients you'd never find here. That's all for now, thanks. What's the story with this place? I helped build it, so I suppose I'm a good one to ask. What would you like to know? Who built this place, originally? Has it been here long? That's a good question. The first time I circled Diamond City looking up, it was obvious where to put the greenhouse with all these windows. But when Abbott opened the door to this room for me, the floor was collapsed to the ground. Nobody had been in here for over 200 years. Mr. Dr. Pepper and his friends worked for two weeks to fill in the pit with soil from below the stadium foundation and then level the floor for me. It was expensive, but Cricket located more intact glass to fill in all the broken windows and some old metal stairs for the loft already up there. I honestly can never repay the citizens of this city for all the kindness that they've shown this vault rat who just wants to do her research. <laughs> Don't tell the overseer or Dr. Penske I said this, but I like it here much more than the vault. There's so much more space and freedom. I've got my own lab, new friends, a suitor, I see new people every day, and I don't have to ration my shower water when I stand under a spout. I could see myself calling this place home for a good long while. The water? Ugh. Shane Kowalski's water is contaminated, even though he denies it. I had to purify my own water for the plants. I even used the shower by the door. Scara helped me design the large-scale electrolytic purifiers you see outside. We got most of the materials from Vault 81 junk piles. 
Luckily, most of the pipework from the original stadium survived, so water is easy to transport from the pond in the stadium. Abbott, the Bobrovs, and Mr. Dr. Pepper did the heavy lifting. Much of the town has been very friendly to me, and I'm very grateful. You own this place? In as much as any settler owns an unoccupied piece of land they claim and work in this abandoned world, then yes. I own this greenhouse, Mr. Dr. Pepper owns his diner, and the Bobrov brothers own the dugout inn. The city, citizens, and security recognize my claim. That makes it as official as it gets around here. It's better than a 200-year-old empty husk with a collapsed second floor, which is how I found the place. I wanted to ask you about something else. That's all for now, thanks. <sighs> That's a shame. My babbling about science is the stuff of legend in Vault 81. I wanted to ask you about something else. Tell me about the Minutemen. I like the idea of the Minutemen. From what I'm told, they were once a force to be reckoned with, and allied closely to Diamond City. Times are different now. They seem to be the punchline of a joke about what happens when you stick your neck out for the Commonwealth. I heard they were effectively wiped out in Quincy by the Gunners not long ago. A sad end, really. The good side does not always win, it seems. What can you tell me about the Institute? They make no sense, and that frightens me. What are they trying to do by replacing us? Surely they can march over this city with a robot army. But they just replace us with sterile copies that can snap at any second. I agree that McDonough is one of them, but why replace any of us at all? I can't extrapolate any sort of logic from synth replacements. Nobody benefits, opinion is only solidified against them, and no agenda is advanced. That's what truly scares me about the Institute. Stunning technology aside, I can't figure out their fundamental motivation. Both the Sheriff and I spend long hours analyze... Apologies. You'll forgive me, but I shouldn't be talking about such things with outsiders, of course. Who are the Brotherhood of Steel? I've never met one. From what I'm told of their hierarchy in society, they must have a high coefficient of inbreeding. From what I know, they're little better than very successful gunners who sleep with their cousins and won't kill you if you give them what they want. The Sheriff used to be one of them, but she went AWOL with her squad for reasons that aren't mine to discuss. She knows Latin, advanced military strategy, and has her finger on the pulse of her troops, making her a formidable commander. Brotherhood education has to be top-notch, if nothing else. But the tribalism they exhibit is antithetical to their stated purpose of saving humanity. I wanted to ask you about something else. I don't have any more questions. Let's get down to business. You get right to the point, don't you? Okay, then. Let's try to come to some sort of agreement. Got any work? I heard about Lily stomping her power armor through the bleachers with a motorcycle engine strapped to it. Was it you that helped her? This structure wasn't originally a greenhouse. In fact, the entire second story was collapsed in on the first. There was no actual second floor left. Mr. Dr. Pepper gathered his friends, and together we filled the entire first floor with soil from under the stadium foundation. The soil you're standing on goes all the way down to street level. You're in what is effectively a giant glass-covered flower pot. However, soil quality was very poor, and incapable of sustaining the heavy turnover of carbon-fixed materials in the greenhouse today. I've been working with materials from Vault 81, Brahmin Dung, and Standard Fertilizer, but I really need industrial strength soil interventions. That's where you come in. Are you up to hunting down large quantities of pre-war chemicals? So, what did you have in mind? I'm gonna need some more in the way of details. The first treatment I need is to replenish soil nitrogen levels, and a job this size requires urea, and a lot of it. It was a pretty standard soil treatment for large-scale farming before the war, and is used to recondition poor post-war soil on today's farms. But make sure you're prepared. It's stored in large drums. They're big, super heavy, and must remain perfectly sealed. I'll help if I can. That's wonderful news. I need you to find as much urea as possible to replenish the nitrogen content of my soil. It's big, heavy, and usually stored dry. Make sure you have enough space to carry it back when you find it. 
you should start your search in any chemical plants and warehouses or even farms, particularly high production or poor soil quality farms. Hello there. in the left field. The jewel of the great green jewel of the commonwealth. A little slice of Nuka world without all the assholes to fuck it up. What's the story with this place? This is the left field, my friend. A little piece of Nuka world put here just before the bombs fell if the records we found were to be believed. It was a smart business move, you ask me. Folks on a triple spend any amount of money to shut the kids up. Think of the Marco. I was chasing after a cat one day and it squeezed between some plywood behind a huge pile of lawn mowers. I was pretty hungry, so I kept after it. Pull some wood down and I find this place all boarded up, like the rest of the city. Makes you wonder what else is out there. And you are? Mr. Dr. Pepper at your service. Owner and operator of this beautiful establishment. What can I help you with? What have you got for sale? Food and drinks for the citizens and security, mostly. Myrna managed to scrape together a work and cooling unit. We actually have cold soda. Heard any good rumors? Free tip. If you're bored, you can pay Sheffield and Nuka Cola to debase himself publicly. That guy'll do anything for a bottle. He's got issues. Let's get down to business. Sure thing. We talking trade or service? Got any work? Not right yeah. now. But I found an old instruction manual for the installation of a soda fountain that didn't make it here before the war. If it looks like something doable, I could use someone to go out into that goddamn hellhole and find me the pots. I'll let you know. That's all for now, thanks. Got any Nuka Mix recipes? I'm pretty sure I have them all, but I'll pay top cap for new ones. See it anywhere in here. Are you sure you didn't leave it in one of the other corners? Yes, it's gotta be in here somewhere. Just keep looking. 
I swear sometimes these vines grow too fast to keep up. I am looking, sis. And this is the second time this month this has happened. You gotta learn to keep better track of these things. Did you try between the brain fungus and the blight over there on the left? There's a place on the rocks I usually put the supplements. You check it. I ain't getting nowhere near that creepy glowing green brain of yours. Ugh. I swear that thing's looking at me. It can't hurt you, Lily. It's just a highly evolved species of Gyromitra esculenta that coordinates supplement distribution in the greenhouse. Oh, you know what? Come to think of it, there was a ring on it. Look for the reflection of the luminescence off the metal. Supplements. Right. You know how messed up this is? I know I left it down here somewhere. Hi. You're back. Can I safely assume that large, pre-war drum you brought with you is the urea I asked for? Here it is. Excellent. This is integral to proper conditioning of the soil. Here's your payment. I still have more work if you're interested. Oh, Lily, one last thing before you go. I got word of another chemical supply, and I need someone with some experience to get it for me. Lenny said he came across some anhydrous ammonia while picking through Cambridge Mass Chemical in the loading bay. This is an important one, that's why I'm asking you. My plants go through a lot of nitrogen, and this would take care of them for over a year. It's going to be liquid, and you don't want to spill it on yourself. I don't know how big or what shape the tank will be, though. Lenny, huh? He's probably sold that tip to five other people by now. That guy's slimier than a bog ghoul. Yeah, undoubtedly. It wouldn't be the first time you met another courier at the same hall, both working on the same tip from Lenny. But we've never had problems with batch chemicals. I can't imagine there's that many people interested in anhydrous ammonia. Well, maybe extra smart raiders making chems, but Lenny isn't exactly brave enough to deal with that sort. He's afraid of Mr. Sphincter, after all. I'd ask you what it does, but I can barely pronounce it. Cambridge, huh? Yeah, that's not far. I can go scout it out first, see what I'm dealing with. It'll be easier than lugging a Brahmin or my power armor all the way over there. Sure, I can handle it. After I do a favor for Rizzo. He got a message to me through Lucas. Said something about dogs needing cats? It was hard to understand. You know how Adam cats talk. Yes, of course. A few days doesn't matter. So Rizzo needs a favor, huh? He's got you wrapped around his little finger. Hey now, that's my man you're talking about. Nobody disrespects him. Except me. And only to you. We don't see each other as often as we'd like since I moved back here. Now it's just when I do power armor runs for the sheriff every couple of weeks. I'm just teasing you, Lily. Of course you should go see what Rizzo needs. They're all the way out in the middle of nowhere by themselves. You can't just choose who you love. You could be wrapped around the finger of a jerk, but you've at least got Rizzo. There are lots of girls in Diamond City who would walk over coals to call him theirs, but he's yours. Oh, speaking of Adam Cat desirables, Lenny said to tell you he saw a motorcycle in the loading bay at Mass Chemical, too. Another bike? Hot damn! That's two back to back! I mean, yeah, this won't be new, but if it's intact, there's some good pickings. Well, now I'm gonna have to go check out what Rizzo wants extra fast, so I can get over there and strip down that bike. And I know just the person to help me. What do you say? Wanna come with me to make some caps and meet some of the coolest customers in the Commonwealth? I'd be glad to help if I can. <laughs> awesome! You get to meet the gang, you know. I'm gonna go get my gear together. Come see me at my room when you're ready. Oh, and Babs? Hmm? Yes, Lily? I found your severed hand. Here you go. Great! Thanks, Lily. That would have started smelling pretty awful in another day or so. Good luck out there. Be careful. Word is Quincy's gunners are pretty well dug in by now.